There was a teaser leaked earlier last week, but now we have an official one and it is not the same thing. This one is longer and in English too, which does help me. So let us take a look at what the new teaser has shown us. Hello and welcome to The Broken Sword. Today we are looking at the July 14th teaser for The Rings of Power show. The Rings of Power is really starting to ramp up their teaser releases a little bit, with us now getting something over two minutes long, much better than the under one minute things we've had in the past. Yet it is still not counted as a full trailer, and so by the seams of things, there's still a full trailer to come later. But either way, let's have a look at this teaser that has been officially released by Amazon, have a look through it, and see what we think. We start off with a shot rising over rocks of a ship entering a city, the same shot that ended the previous teaser. We can see faces carved in the rocks and I will admit it does look nice and surely this must be Numenor, right? Not that just a nice opening can hide everything that comes later on, but I'm glad Numenor may be getting some more attention from this teaser. But let's keep going. Next we get a close up of Galadriel's face to go with the voiceover that we have had so far and this is what opened the teaser which said, there was a time when the world was so young. And with that, straight away, I'm getting those Howard Shaw cues with the music too. This is definitely to try and help everything feel more Middle Earthy to the viewer, and leaning into those kind of things is definitely a way Amazon should look to go. You need to lean in towards those Peter Jackson vibes because they were received so well. I understand doing something different, but why try and fix something that isn't broken? Yes, you can be original, but still lean into those and take cues from it. But from that we get a character walking up to the crest of a hill as the sunrise shines over it, with it then cutting into one of the glowing trees of Valinor. As we know, these are destroyed before the first age, so this must definitely be some kind of flashback. All of this is going on though, as Galadriel's voiceover continues with, they had not yet the sunrise, but even then, there was light. This glows and cuts to the Prime Video logo, followed by some aerial shots of a group moving quickly, looking like they're trying to run from something, and then to snowy mountains with people walking up it, and a great eagle soaring through the skies. So we're gonna have it, the eagles will be coming in this show. Which, if you know Numenor, you knew was gonna be the case, but they've kind of confirmed it here. Next we have a shot of elven buildings. This feels like it could be Linden to me, I could also be mistaken, and I do get some Peter Jackson vibes from this shot, but that may just be from the style of the swooping movement showing things off. But we do have a continuing voiceover again, which says how elves have realms to protect, dwarves their minds. And this is where we now move on to something that I have wanted to see from day one, a shot of the inside of what must be Khazad Doom. The dwarven architecture looks stunning, and close to what I expected it to be, so from this very quick glimpse it seems good but there will be so much more to this realm that is just not in this shot. So show me more. And we can also see there are a couple of dwarves doing something on the left, probably something to do with mining, but it's great to see something going on. But the voiceover continues again. Men, their fields of grain. And as we hear that, we do get something new with a shot of farmers in a small village setting. This very much looks like the same village or very close village to that from the Vanity Fair article labeled as Bronwyn, played by Nazanin Bonaidi, with her forbidden love, Arondia Ismail Cruz Cordova, in the village of Tir Harad. So this must be Tir Harad, which is again an original for Amazon. They did have many locations that they could have used, so original characters in original settings kind of makes sense in terms of a grander story, meaning that they could hide them away and stop them affecting maybe the grander things. However, this does cause a big issue that means Amazon could fall flat on their faces if they do take the wrong steps in its conviction. And also, for those interested though, the name Tyr Harad appears to be comprised of the Sindarin words Tyr, which means watch, and Harad, which means south. So maybe this is a city or village that watches over the Southlands, or maybe somewhere more specific to the south of a location. This is something though that we will just discover in time. We then see the two wanderers that we got glimpses of from some of the earliest pictures and we hear, but we Harfoots have each other, while then seeing a Harfoot blowing a whistle. Whether that is in warning, in welcome, or something else we will just have to wait and see though. 
We do then see though that there are some Harfords dancing in the woods, and this hints a lot about their ways. We've already had a hint from the last teaser that they are friends with the Ents, so maybe this is some sort of party, some ritual, or just some gathering involving both. We don't really know again, well, we'll wait and see, but what we do get next is a Harfoot woman, and she is the one who's been saying a lot, where she now says how we're safe. Which is shown just in time for an opposite action to happen with the meteor landing, which again is something we have seen before. One of my big worries is they are going to give the Harfoots a such central role in all things. The Hobbits were known to not get involved until Bilbo went off on his adventure, so having them set off in the second age to fight a big threat just feels plain wrong. I mean, you never know, they could have a situation where they get wiped out by Sauron or a different evil to really hammer home a point of just how evil that being is, and it would definitely get people to sit up and take notice. But really, with Amazon? I cannot see them building up these characters so much in the pre-release content to not have them survive longer. So let's just move on for now shall we? We get the following title screen of saying based on the works of J.R.R. Tolkien, with then us returning to the icy paths and Galadriel we have seen before, but these are new shots, with her stabbing her sword into the ice in what looks like a meaningful conversation with a currently unknown elf. We've had bits of this before so there isn't much more to say, but surely this must be the elves crossing the Halkaraxe, also known as the Grinding Ice, as this is their path to get into Middle Earth. It is said Galadriel crosses this path with her brothers in the Silmarillion, but we are still a bit in the dark about whether they have the rights to any of that material, so who knows what is really going on here. This then cuts into a conversation between Elrond and Galadriel where it says, You have fought long enough Galadriel, put up your sword. This cuts in with a group trying to pass through an ice storm, most likely the elves again, with Galadriel delivering another line back, being somewhere warmer, where she says, the enemy is still out there. The question now is where? But then this cuts to searching icy lands, in what looks like to be the location where she will meet the snow troll like we've seen before, but here she is with other people, which means Galadriel will either get separated from those she is with, or they will get killed, probably by the troll. I feel separation is more likely, but if they do want to shock in moments earlier on, a troll taking out some elves could be a good way to go. We then get a quick aerial shot of a city that is likely to be on Numenor again, before cutting back to that same conversation between Alrond and Galadriel, where Alrond says, It is over. With Galadriel responding, You have not seen what I've seen. Alrond says, I have seen my share. But Galadriel says, You have not seen. And this is where we get the most interesting shot of the teaser to me. Galadriel looking shocked, covered in dirt and fire embers around her all in red. This is cut with people in red again underwater with bodies floating, with one body in the foreground appearing to have a spear through their stomach. In my head this must be one of the Kinslayings, and to me, I feel like it should probably be the first one, as Galadriel was involved in this according to the Unfinished Tales book. For those of you who do not know though, there were three Kinslayings with the Owls. The first one was at Aqualonde, during the Years of the Trees, in other words, before the first age, so way before the second age. Galadriel was said to have been involved with this one as she fought against Feanor on the side of her mother's kin, albeit she turned up later as she arrived with the second group who were led by Fingolfin. But what this does mean is that this event is more relevant to Galadriel, and therefore Alrond as well, so with the show being so focused on Galadriel, to me that's where my mind goes. At this point though the music builds up even more for a screen saying this September as it fades into a Numenorean ship entering a city, and then cuts to a wide aerial that we have seen before. I do assume that this is just the same city as we've seen the boat sailing into at the beginning of the teaser too. Then we have The Legend Begins, as we see a shot we have before, with who I believe is Alrond with Gil-galad under a golden tree as it cuts into their conversation there. Darkness will march over the face of the earth. It will be the end of not just our people, but all peoples. And as these lines are delivered over the next few shots which are, to start with, another one of my more favourite shots of the teaser, being a group of orcs being led down a path by a, what appears to be a man. This man could well be Adar, as revealed in some of the Rings of Power Comic Con advertisements. So really, with this kind of thing, show me more evil stuff, I am so curious to see so much more of it. 
Everything evil looks so good. The orc releases seem to be the most positive of everything they've put out so far. So show me some more of that. I'm almost fed up of seeing the good guys. I want to see some evil now. But with that, we return to another reuse shot of Galadriel on the boat with the birds flying down. This is the one which I believe to be them sailing towards one of the trees that we saw earlier on, but all in terms of a flashback when in the actual show. I don't think they're going to change stuff around that much. I think this will be a memory or a story that she is telling. Now we get our Muriel shots that we've seen before, with a second shot then also coming from above her, looking down at the falling petals falling upon her. They have now confirmed that this character is Muriel, and she is to be played by Corinthia Adai Robinson. So do these petals actually have anything to do with a coronation on Numenor? Has Farazon now become our Farazon? It's all just guesswork right now, but this could be an idea, and it could also be why she is so concerned. But we're back to the Harfords again, as those petals seem to blend into embers, with Markella Kavanagh as Nori Brannyfoot looking worried. And to me, she is looking at the Meteor landing site, and that is why she is worried, as it does then cut into Meteor Man out of focus, also looking at the embers. But now we return to Khazad Doom, and thank you for showing me more of this. This is the time where we see Alrond entering the realm, being escorted by a couple of guards. And I will say it again, I am loving the look of Kazadoom. This is one thing I will say I feel that they have definitely gotten right. Now whatever happens within the realm, maybe up for questions, but the look of it itself, I'm on board with. I really do feel like they brought the right artists on board to really help show this world. We then have a few cuts of a dwarf talking to Elrond saying, he is sorry, but their time has come. We then get Jorin breaking a stone like we've seen before, and then a new elf dodging some falling ice in the location that we've seen with Galadriel before. Then more quick cuts of characters, including Arondia saying, the past is with us all, and then we see a cavalry charge by the Numenorians with warrior Galadriel at its head. I'm wondering if this is the same battle as we see in the Entertainment Weekly article, where it shows Miriel and Isildur. Maybe this is the battle between the Faithful and the King's Men, or maybe somehow Orcs have reached Numenor. We don't really know, we will have to wait and see, but I am needing more to fully understand their reasoning behind not just Galadriel being on Numenor, but Miriel being a leader in battle. I do hope it's not just a case of, ah, oh, we need strong women and they put them in there for the sakes of it. I hope it actually makes sense in the plot. I can accept things if they are set out properly, built up properly, explained properly, and convicted well. Not something that is just jammed down your throat for the hell of it. But anyway, let's move on. Now we have the Harfoots embracing as though they are scared, or maybe just survived a scary encounter. Then a shot of a storm and the shipwreck that was teased in many of the earlier pictures released by the show, and then quickly back to Numenorian related shots again. We see a great Numenorian ship hitting a wave, with then a seeing young Isildur played by Maxim Baldry aboard the ship. We then get a straight cut to Elendil and Galadriel riding along the coastline of Numenor with a slow motion shot of her dress. We know this is the case from the latest Entertainment Weekly article, so Galadriel is 100% on Numenor quite early on. This could be a very dividing choice. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm not aware of it ever being said that Galadriel visited this island, so this could really change things that people do not want to be touched. They better have a good plot reason for doing this, and not just because Galadriel wants to see the world as such, or because they want two strong women in the same scene. We'll just have to see how it goes. But then after the slow-mo, we get Elendil, played by Lloyd Owen, delivering the line of, The past is dead. We either move forward or die with it. Initially this appeared as though he was responding to Arondir's comment, but then it shows he's actually really appearing to speak to someone else. So just the classic example of a trailer cutting different scenes together to throw people off a little bit. And then we get even more Numenor, as we now see Farazon in his blue and red robes, holding out his hands, chanting to a crowd. They appear to be keen on what he's saying. This could well be part of that great split I mentioned between the Faithful and the King's Men, with that being hinted at with the cutting between Farazon and Elendil, but that is something again we'll have to see in time. Now we see a man aggressively riding, picking up a spear, and looking like he is about to charge into battle, although I'm not too sure on who this is to really give any more information on it yet. So let's move on. Durin is then talking with an item in his hand, saying this could be the beginning of a new era with that also being the last line of the teaser that is spoken. But as for what he is holding, this could very well be the discovery of Mithril in Khazad Doom, with him believing that this material will bring great things for his people. I mean, it is never specified exactly when Mithril was first discovered, so this could well be something they bring in for the show. 
From here we then see a group raising their swords. It even appears that they are wearing similar armour to what we've seen Galadriel in the much earlier releases too, so I'll be curious to see more about this. But next, we get a Matrix moment. A Rondir in chains flipping over a wolf or war creature, and this just feels like a very generic action shot, so I'm not going to hold on to that shot for more than this moment. Then we get Galadriel dodging a snow troll that we have seen before, with her then attacking it. These shots are really just more of stuff we've seen before though, so we'll move on again. As now we go back to Meteor Man as he emerges from the flames. There is a very popular theory that this could be Sauron, especially as people are claiming the shot from above looks like an eye of fire, but I'm not sure that I'm sold on that yet. It seems far too obvious for me. However, Amazon's marketing has been questionable at best, so giving away their big baddie so early on like they have could also be something that they might do. But to me, I'm not sold on that yet. And then to end, we get the Harfoots walking down field shot that we have seen before, with the end title rounding things off. So now, what to say about all of that? I feel like we have gotten a bit more than I expected from this. It is still not labelled as a full trailer, which you know, I'm still waiting quite impatiently for, so surely San Diego Comic Con must be the time for that release. But anyway, so much stuff that they have released over the past few months feels new to Tolkien's world. Like the Meteor story, for example. It is okay to add some new stuff in to fill the gaps, of which there are many in the Second Age, but they seem to just be focusing more solely on the invented stuff for their teasers. Okay, maybe slightly less with this one, but this may be more as a reaction to what fans have said, and it may not be the case when it comes to the show, but they seem to have shown very little to go against this argument really up until this point. I've said it before and I'll say it again, the marketing for the show has been awful, to put it kindly. They seem very unclear on the path that they want to go, who they are truly trying to market it all to, and if they really even care about what Tolkien originally wrote. I understand how adaptation works, but it should work to enhance what you already have, to make things work for a different medium, not to butt head against it and fight against it. This is not a world and people that Amazon have created all from the beginning. No, they have had a large and rich world, debatably the best one ever, which they can take stuff from. So use it, embrace it, give the fans what they want. I mean, it really makes their life easier if they went down that way. To not really just try and create a show that feels like every show has to feel these days. The Meteor could be an interesting story point, but their devout focus on it throughout all the marketing material so far is what raises so many alarm bells to me. I don't believe it is Sauron, it is too soon and too obvious for me. I feel like it is more of a red herring, and honestly I see the character being more like someone of one of the blue wizards. That way Amazon get their Gandalf-like character in the show, and I'm sure they would love to have that. After all, in the later writings released by Tolkien, he did write that they arrived more around the year 1600 of the Second Age at the same time as Glorfindel, whereas Gandalf, Saruman and Radagast did not arrive until the Third Age. So that way, they get their wizard, they can make him as Gandalf-like as they wish, even though I feel like that would be a mistake, and it doesn't go against what was written. So even though it was supposed to have been at the time that Sauron forged the One Ring as a reaction by the Valar to send them, because of the time compression element of the show, this may well also change things. And that time compression is still something that I am so, so worried about. However, there is one positive thing I would like to say about this all though, and that is that I'm really enjoying both the set designs as I feel like they are stunning and kind of what I want to see, and as well with the music. I feel like, especially with this trailer, for me the music is on point, and I'm happy with how they're going with it. But really, I feel like we've talked about this teaser for long enough for today, because right now I want to know from all of you. How are you feeling now? You feeling more positive, more negative, or more just not bothered at all? Let me know all of your thoughts and opinions on this in the comment section below. Finally, if you have managed to reach the very end of this video with me today and you are enjoying what you see on this channel, please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon too with all notifications selected so that you'll be notified of all of our future uploads. And so, thank you for taking your time and spending it with me today, and I will see you on the next video on The Broken Sword.